Hey guys, welcome back to The Modeling Edge. I'm Nick and I have another unboxing. So the next few videos are gonna be a bunch of projects that I am starting right now as part of the scale modeling, mostly focused on armor series to bring new guys into the hobby. So if you haven't seen my M1A2 set video from yesterday, I highly encourage you guys to check that out if you like armored vehicles. There was a lot of really neat surprises in that kit, absolutely beautiful. You really do get what you pay for. It is just incredible. So rarely do I see plastic model kits that'll do 90% of the work and the research um, to make a vehicle look almost completely realistic right out of the box. So go check that out. And there'll be a link to that after this video. And today I wanted to look at the companion piece for this project, which is another American modern vehicle. And that is of course, EAA VP 7A1. Now I'm gonna be building mine with the EAAK, which is just enhanced at point armor kit. Basically, these are composite armor plates. I thought they were ERA, but they're not. And they just come in sheets and hook up to the vehicle. And uh, you can take them off for ease of access in different operations. The reason I bring that up will be explained when I start showing you how this kit operates. And of course, it's from Hobby Boss, uh, 35th scale out of i think the seven or eight offerings of this particular vehicle at this scale hobby boss actually makes the majority i think they make six or seven different versions of this and of course the other one is the 1985 tamiya kit so if i could get this open so i've already looked through this once before so it's all kind of jumbled up uh, on my Instagram live where I'll be doing some other stuff with the Abrams later today. So again, if you can, please check out my Instagram. But first things first, just like with the Abrams, you get a nice set of photo etch, not as extensive, but basic tie downs for the muffler covers and various grills, winch points, not excessive, but definitely helpful. And just like the Abrams kit, this has snapped together tracks. Now they're not the same type of tracks, obviously usually the Abrams, so I don't think I'll be able to use the jib that the Ryefield model gave me to help put these together, but I'm gonna try it and we'll find out. Comes with a pretty extensive decal sheet and, and I first opened it, I thought that was way too many decals for this because this is all exterior markings, but all these are interior. And I didn't realize it at first, but this kit does come with a complete interior and you can already see the main bulkhead floor and one of the bulkhead walls right here on this piece. So it has a wealth of interior detail in this kit that I was not expecting, which is really cool. So just like with the Ryefield tank, for anybody who doesn't know, bathtub style hull, usually in newer kits will come all molded and put together. It has nice cast texture and very nice weld, weld beads there. These are a little bit bigger than the ones on the Ryefield kit, which tends to happen. So if I feel the need to, I will be removing some of these and just resizing them. And then it has all the major attachment points for the uh, EAAK. And why I say major attachment points is, and it's really interesting, you're not going to be attaching that armor to any of these. This is just where they exist on the real vehicle. So it's kind of neat how they engineered it. And of course, here's the top hole. Good detail on the engine. This will all be covered in photo etch, but still nice to have. Antenna mounts, things like that. Capola's opened. They're going to give you full periscopes, just like the Abrams kit. They're here. So full periscopes. The really interesting thing is on the Commander's Capola, it's just plastic. But they still give you glass plates to put over it. So if you wanted to paint those black and then put glass over it, it does give you that 3D effect. Even though it is really blocked up and it's not hollow like the other ones. Top hatches for the roof, rails. They have a nice thickness to them. It might be a little too thick, so I'm gonna try and sand them down, but pretty good start. I'm sorry, you can't really see everything through the writing here, but just amazing details on the bulkheads. Some of these wires are gonna get replaced with metal, but for now, pretty good. If uh, So yeah, here's the commander's turret. You can see how they're not cut out at all. It's just solid plastic. So they do provide you with some glass to put over that if you did want to paint it. What I'm doing, which is using foil to recreate um, the American anti-reflective coating on their lenses. Flip it onto the 
back. See some of the tubes. There was a uh, the ammo feed chain for the uh, 40 caliber grenade launcher right in there. So all pretty good details, pretty standard stuff. Uh, but the really interesting things come with, again, the interior that I did not know it had. So pretty good detail on the bulkhead. Nothing close to what Ryfield has done, but for a kit that's much, much older than the Ryfield kit and was not using the same technology that it had available to it, this is a pretty incredible detailed kit. Here's the entire back of the vehicle. And so the real AA7, this whole pack panel right here, you can either open the door or drop the whole thing down and that's why they keep it separate because it gives you the option to do either or in your display of this kit. Two sprues for road wheels, pretty standard stuff. So they try to do a hex shape and it comes through cleaner on some wheels versus others. And then the back is just pretty generic. So that's another big difference between ride field and kits like this is that they went the extra step to get all those bolts correct. It's not gonna make or break a kit by any stretch of the imagination. So don't worry too much about it. The nasals for the water jet, headlights, sprocket wheel, jerry cans for inside. You do get aerial mounts, and of course I'm gonna have to make my own aerial antennas for those. And then spare tracks, which is interesting. I don't know of how many of these vehicles had spare tracks on them, so I can't speak to that. But I don't know where I'm going to put spare tracks. Last brew continues with bulkheads, some ammo cans, some storage bins. This is the rear, right under the turret, so I guess the forward-facing bulkhead, rather, excuse me, where the turret sits in here. That's what it looks like in the real vehicle. It's just basically a bulged-out wall at the far end of the uh, vehicle. Now, there is no detail on the inside of that. So there is going to be some interior stuff to the turret that I think is only going to cover the gun. So if you're going to want to make this an open kit like I am, there's going to be some work to do in there which is part of this series i'll be scratch building a lot of that interior but here is the most interesting part of the kit i guess best for last these are the armor plates if you flip them over you'll see there's no attachment points in here there's one clip right there that plugs into the side of the aap and then on the back there's more clips that you will glue into i'm oh, sorry that you will glue into those little control points uh depending on where you're at but it's not only to keep the thickness of the armor off the vehicle more realistic, but except for the part holding it on, the rest of these EEAK plates can be removed quite easily and kind of just sit on the vehicle like they would in real life, which allows you the option to be as modular with your display of this vehicle as the real thing is. So I'm probably going to slice or saw some of these apart and do a in-between or interim op look as they are either removing or adding plates to the vehicle for its next mission. And last but not least, fully colored decal sheets. They give you colors for um, Vallejo, Model Master, and Tamiya to do this. Now, one thing I've noticed with Hobby Boss kits is when they put Vallejo, they always put 843. Uh, for any color, whether it's gray, tan, that's cork brown uh, in Vallejo, if anybody notices. And the only reason this has been brought to my attention is because I was looking up FS colors through Vallejo for a customer yesterday while we were looking at the Hobby Boss uh, Raphael 172nd scale kit, which is a French jet. And I realized that not only that kit, but... Uh, the A7 Crusader 2, this kit, and a couple other armor kits, when they get to Vallejo, they all put 843 for every single color. And I don't know if that's just a printing mistake or something lost in translation, but don't use the Vallejo. If you're using these color guides, find your colors on your own, do some research, but don't use the Vallejo colors here. Um, and then you have two schemes, Woodland Camo, with green and so again the reason these are all solid colors is these are used for any vehicle anywhere in operation so the plates stay a standard color whereas the vehicles change now both of these are for woodland camos because they're amphibious vehicles used in the 2003 invasion so it won't actually be i say it's a companion piece to the tusk too it's very unlikely that the two vehicles would have operated together uh in the battlefield these would have been with the original M1A2s with no upgrades or even some of the up 
upgraded M1 A1s. Either way, most vehicles in the American military that went over to Iraq were actually still in their European style camouflage from training in the United States or from running maneuvers in Europe. So that's the only two color options they give you, which is, of course, historically accurate and nicely researched. So all around, a very nice looking kit. Again, not as detailed as the Ryfield model, but way more detailed than a lot of 135th scale uh, kits I've seen lately, especially with that full interior. So it's not going to be on the same level as like a Meng or a Tacom, which also, like Ryfield, do full interior kits. But for what it is at the price point and for a vehicle that those other companies won't cover because it's not as popular, this, I think, is going to be the best offering straight out of the box uh, of the A A7. So thank you for joining me as always like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. I'll be doing another video on another kit. It's not armor and won't be part of the series, but I got a bunch to do. So that'll be going up later. And then I'll be doing Instagram live again, where I am going to start the Ryefield M1A2 by building the track links, the workable track links, just to see how easy that is or how difficult it is compared to gluing them together. So if you want to check that out, please join me on Instagram in about an hour or two. And as always, hope you enjoy it and go check out that M1A2 video. Very, very beautiful kid. Just incredible.